I know, it's a weird title, but bear with me, it'll make sense. I made this smart doorbell to solve a very small problem brought on by late stage capitalism. Now what do I mean by that, and how does capitalism have anything to do with this? A few years ago, I moved into an apartment complex owned by Graystar Apartments. This Graystar Apartments. Graystar owns 13 mid and high rise buildings all around me, which is a problem because when you own that much real estate, it's a race to the bottom to maximize profits and minimize expenses. And one of the ways that Graystar did that is by getting rid of all of their front desk staff. If you're not familiar with apartment living in a city, normally you'd have one or two people that work at a front desk to do things like accept packages for mail carriers. Graystar said, out of here, you cost too much. So instead, they had to figure out, how are we going to get packages to residents? Graystar was onto something. See, they realized they could buy a warehouse far away from where the apartment complexes are and have all of the packages get delivered there. Someone signs for the packages at the warehouse, and then they use an app called Fetch, where a resident will schedule the packages to get delivered to their door, obviously by a low-paid gig worker that they can take advantage of due to their economic situation. Kinda shitty if you ask me. From a resident's point of view, it really sucks because this is sold as a luxury feature and you end up having to pay for it monthly. It's mandatory. It's obviously not included in your rent, but it's a mandatory charge. But really it's a cost cutting measure for them. And to me as a resident, it's very easy to see through that because it takes an extra day or two for me to get my packages because I have to schedule it through a middleman. Dumb, very dumb. The problem gets a little bit deeper than that. You have two options. You can either have the packages delivered and left at your door, or you can sign for the packages. Now, if you choose the first option and the package gets stolen, or maybe it doesn't get delivered in the first place, Fetch isn't responsible for it. You're just out of luck. However much it costs, you gotta order it again. Option number two, if you say that you'll sign for it, if you miss them knocking on the door, add an extra day onto delivery. So if you buy something two day delivery on Amazon and it shows up on day three and you're not there to answer the door, well now you're talking four day delivery. Eek. I work from home, which means I normally have headphones on listening to music or I'm like in a meeting. That means a lot of times, if there's a light tapping on the door, I'll just miss it. And my two day delivery just keeps going up and up and up. Well, I'm an engineer. Maybe I can't solve the problem that is housing, but I can solve not answering the door. So I present to you the smart doorbell. What exactly does this doorbell do? It pauses my music, pauses the TV, flashes the lights in my apartment, and plays a chime. It basically does everything that it can to make sure that I get up and I answer the door. So you might be wondering, why did I have to make a doorbell? Can't you just buy a doorbell? Well, yes and no. You can, but there's no middle ground. And what I mean by that is a doorbell that can tie into Home Assistant without all the unnecessary things like cameras and cloud applications. You either have your privacy screwer 9000 by ring, or you have some dumb button that just makes a wall wart in the other room play a chime. I started thinking, what's a wireless thing that ties into smart homes easily that can basically send a true or false value for when a button's pressed? A door sensor is pretty much the ideal thing. I already use Z-Wave devices for some smart light switches, and they make Z-Wave door open close sensors. And for around 30 bucks, that's not that bad. So I bought this one and when I opened it up, I even found that it had an external breakout for the sensor. So all I had to do was crack it open, design a new enclosure and stuff a button into that header. Seems pretty simple. So well, let's get started. I started off by making a form, which is this purple thing in Fusion 360. This is also called NURBS modeling if you're used to that in say Rhino or Blender. I did the same thing with another form to create the button. I found this little house with a speaker icon from the Google Material Design Library and I imported that and then used that as a cutting tool to create the recess in the button. I colored the parts in order to see how they would look and I think that's a good enough design. The next thing I did was I opened up the door sensor I got and I took a measurement of the circuit board. The header for the button is a little bit offset and I want the button to be centered in the doorbell. Because of that, I made the base a little extra wide compared to the circuit board to account for that offset. I was worried that by having the button free floating, there'd be too much fatigue on the leads. So I made this little floating hexagon support thing that's gonna get glued in to hold the button in place. I realized that my starting body was a little bit too small, so I just scaled it up and moved it around till it looked like it was gonna fit over everything perfectly. I want this button to have a smoother transition into the body of the doorbell. I made a quick sketch and revolved it around, followed by a fillet to match the curvature of the button, and then I shelled out the inside of the housing. Once shelled out, I could join the revolved feature to the rest of the housing. I then made a really big fillet to smooth that transition from the body to the button holder. I guess that's what we're calling it now. A button holder that holds the button cap that sits on top of the actual button? Sure. <laughs> Looking at the cross section, you can see that we have the base plate here at the bottom, and that's what the circuit board's gonna get glued into. We then have this support bracket that sits over top of the button to provide additional support, and this all sits inside of this housing. 
One thing that was problematic is there's nothing that actually stops the button from rotating. The physical button, the electrical button, that it connects to has a button top that can freely rotate, and this plastic bit can freely rotate too, even if I was to glue it onto the button. Because of this, when people would press the doorbell, the iconography would rotate, and surprisingly, the small increase in cognitive load that that rotation caused would stop people from pressing the doorbell as frequently. So I came back and I designed a few additional features in. So the first thing we did was we cut an additional slot into the housing, as you can see here, before and after. Once that slot was created, we could modify the button to have a small extruding point that slides inside of that channel. Think of this almost like a dovetail joint, even though it's not really a dovetail. Those small nubs are able to ride in the channel, and that prevents the button from rotating. Because I didn't want to have to reprint this button, I instead printed the little nubs as separate things, and then a separate guide body that I could use to help glue it together and keep the alignment correct. This didn't work as well as I wanted it to, but it worked good enough that it saved me some work, so I'm calling it a mild success. All right, with our modeling done, we can export all of our parts and go ahead and fire up the 3D printer. With our printed bits hot off the build plate, we can go ahead and remove our supports. Now, I'm gonna take this small section of the video to remind you, if your supports do not come out this easily, please, please, please treat all future prints as test prints to dial your supports in. You'll thank me later. For me personally, three top contact surfaces with a 0.1 distance and a well-tuned temperature tower seems to do the trick. Well, everything's sanded and fitting smoothly, so the only thing left to do is a final dry fit, and then we can glue it all together. Here you can see the housing. Inside, there's that little support structure I talked about. That's holding the button, and then there's that little plastic button cap right on top. Popping it off, you can see it's just a cheap push button from Amazon. Real quick, one thing I forgot to film. I had to desolder that green connector to directly solder the button on, just due to size. Okay, with that out of the way, let's move on to programming. Luckily, because this is all going through Home Assistant, it's very easy to add. Come down to the Add Device button, click that, and I can join it to my smart home. So once that's all connected, we can go into the device page, and we can make sure that the window door is open status is changing when we press the button. Like all the other stuff in my smart home, the brains behind it is all done in Node-RED, and Home Assistant merely acts as a hub to connect everything and a nice dashboard to view things with. So let's walk through the automation. The first thing we do is capture that the doorbell has been pressed. We then rate limit this. This is because it's pretty human nature for you to press the doorbell multiple times. I never actually thought about it until I made this script, but yeah, every time I press the doorbell, ding dong, ding dong, you always press it twice. What's up with that? Anyway, it being pressed twice kind of messed with the automation, so we just do a rate limit. The next thing we do is we get all of the media player entities. This would get Spotify, my TV, the bedroom TV, doesn't matter. And we'll set them to all pause. Underneath, we do a delay, and then we send doorbell.wave to my smart speakers. This is pretty simple, it just makes all the smart speakers in the house sound like a doorbell's going off. Lastly down here, we get all of the light entities, we capture their state, and then we'll turn them off, wait a second, turn them on, wait a little bit, turn them off again, wait a second, turn it back on, wait another little bit, and then we'll restore the state so the lights go back to how they were before the doorbell is pressed. With this simple automation, it's pretty much impossible for me to miss someone ringing the doorbell. So let's go ahead, install it outside, and wait for a package to get delivered. Three hours later. Come on, that's the best part. Hi, I need a signature for this. Wait, are, are you me? Yeah, don't worry about it. it, it it's for a YouTube bit. All right, I'll just, uh, yeah. Yeah, just, just right here on the phone. Wait, oh, that's, that's my phone. I, yeah, I can just, yep, I can just, yep, just need to, just need to hold it for you there. No. Hmm. Nope, nope, yep, uh... Hmm. Yep, just, yep, just, there, there you go. Yep, perfect. Oh, yep, nope, yep, yep, you gotta take it. There we go. Yep, all right. Enjoy the rest of your Lord of the Rings. Yep, you too. Wait. 
You too. That doesn't even make any sense. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> All right. What did I get? that's it. Have a good rest of your day, everyone. It's a fake mustache. It's popcorn. Popcorn made with no oil. It's incredibly disgusting.